NASA's budget request for fiscal year 2025 continues the slowing trend from the finally approved budget for this year, fiscal 2024. It was over five years away, but with less money to work with now, that delays Artemis V into the next decade. After reaching orbit insertion on only its third launch, can the rapid pace of Starship improvements keep up with the rapidly approaching milestone dates to meet the Artemis III September 2026 target? SpaceX has a little more than two years to complete all the required demonstrations for Artemis HLS Option A. The agency baseline commitments we'd been anticipating since last year were released with the budget request documentation, and those forecasts aren't as optimistic about HLS and Gateway. As funding is further restricted for the second year in a row by Congress, that might be one of those factors in the baselines that forecast Starship HLS and Gateway readiness in more or less 2028. Let's take a first look into the new budget documents. Right on the heels of the fiscal 2024 budget being enacted, the fiscal year 2025 president's budget request was released on Monday, March 11. A couple of the baseline commitment watch items that we've been waiting to see for many months were included in the congressional justification document I noted in the last update video. The baseline cost and schedule commitments were approved for initial capability for both HLS and Gateway following their life cycle transition from Phase B's preliminary design to Phase C's final design and fabrication. There's a lot of status and update information to digest in the Congressional Justification document, and eventually we'll want to go through that with respect to EGS, Orion, SLS, and so on. But staying with these agency baseline commitments, the formal baseline for the gateway initial capability, launch readiness of the co-manifested power and propulsion element, and habitation and logistics outpost, was December 2027. The formal baseline for the lunar orbit checkout review of HLS Option A, SpaceX's Starship HLS, was February 2028. In both cases, NASA made a point of a disclaimer when announcing these cost and schedule baselines, particularly the scheduled dates. It says, the establishment of HLS initial capability agency baseline commitments of February 2028 for HLS lunar orbit checkout review in support of Artemis III represents a risk-informed posture that encompass potential issues and not target launch dates. Joint confidence levels, JCL, are used to track program performance. NASA continues to manage to a more aggressive schedule than the launch readiness date in the JCL. Historically, though, pioneering projects and programs, particularly in human spaceflight, have tended to see schedule risks realized. And that segues right into the biggest news of the week. The biggest news of the week was, of course, the third Starship flight test on Thursday, March 14th. This was a big milestone for Starship, and the test showed significant progress in the different flight phases. There are a lot of detailed looks at the flight test already, and the spectacular video during the test, and the elevator music, on other channels, but there are also some Artemis-related points of view in this data quick look period shortly after the test. One of the recurring themes in covering Artemis news is still when Artemis 3 might be ready to launch, and this latest milestone is a good reason to take another look. Somewhere around New Year's, NASA moved the target date for Artemis 3 to September 2026, and they announced that publicly on January 9th. The formal agency baseline commitments were published with the fiscal year 2025 President's budget request on Monday, March 11th. The so-called Joint Confidence Level Analyzed Baseline places Artemis III on the eve of launch in February 2028, as opposed to the September 2026 agency target date. Those estimates define about an 18-month time frame. The Lunar Orbit Checkout Review was defined in the HLS Request for Proposals, the Appendix H1, back in 2019. The review will be conducted when Starship HLS is on station in near rectilinear halo orbit to verify that the HLS program is ready to support the launch of the Artemis III crew on Orion. 
Another requirement in the HLS request for proposals was that the lander be capable of 60 days of loiter time in NRHO, which will give NASA and Exploration Ground Systems a time frame to target their launch preparations of SLS and Orion. Now that SpaceX has reached the launch to orbit insertion milestone for Starship, let's work backwards from NASA's September 2026 launch target. Let's set aside the celestial mechanics for the NRHO rendezvous for now and start with a launch of Orion and crew on SLS in the last week of September 2026. Let's also assume that the lunar orbit checkout review occurs 30 days before the crew launch, 10 tanker launches, and a week between the different Starship launches. For what it's worth, the Agency Baseline Commitment Milestone Calendar in the President's Budget Request documentation shows the FRR, or Flight Readiness Review, ahead of the tanker salvo in that review minus four months time frame, October 2027, for a checkout review in February 2028. Anyway, I'm also assuming from some breadcrumbs in the past that HLS would launch somewhere in the middle of that sequence. So, for a September 2026 target launch date, that would put the depot launch around Memorial Day, or end of May 2026. The dedicated HLS depot might already be positioned from the uncrewed demonstration, but either way, weekly tanker launches would need to begin in early June of 2026. Those would continue through June and July and into August with the launch of the crewed HLS demo vehicle somewhere in that sequence. HLS would be sufficiently fueled to leave for the moon by the second to last week of August, which leaves a week to reach NRHO and conduct the lunar orbit checkout review at the end of August 2026. That's what HLS will be aiming towards, which is to have completed all the interim milestones, including the uncrewed demo, in basically the next two years. So the ambitious schedule still remains out there, even with delaying Artemis 3 9, 10 months not that long ago. The agency baseline commitment milestone calendar has completion of the HLS critical design review in August of next year. NASA officials have said they want to position CDR after the ship-to-ship propellant transfer milestone is completed. That's a little less than 18 months from now. The next milestone after the ship-to-ship -ship propellant transfer demo is the uncrewed lunar landing demo, which will include an abbreviated depot and tanker launch sequence. So that's a lot of work. Considering the scale and ambition of what SpaceX is developing Starship to do, yesterday's successful orbit insertion milestone was a big achievement but they are racing against an incredibly ambitious schedule to be ready for their Artemis 3 launches in not much more than two years. It seems like if they were to achieve those milestones even by the February 2028 checkout review date, it would still be a great accomplishment. Even if Starship HLS was ready closer to the February 2028 date, the numbers from the fiscal year 2024 budget that was enacted and now the fiscal year 2025 budget just requested suggest that the rest of Artemis could have their own challenges supporting Artemis 3 and 4 by the end of the decade. The way the budgets for the other programs are trending, the question might be who will be waiting for who on Artemis 3 and 4. NASA has replanned based on the new budget caps in place, and they had to slow down schedule or cut out activities. This is the updated Artemis manifest released with the fiscal year 2025 budget request materials. NASA plans activities out for multiple years, and the reduced funding from the budget caps has, all by itself, delayed Artemis 5 six months and delayed the ability of Artemis to reach an annual cadence of flights a year beyond that. Exploration beyond Earth orbit is the top NASA priority in Washington, and it fared better than other directorates. But the budget cuts make it harder to argue their support for keeping the lunar landing on track for that September 2026 target. They also make it questionable how much urgency there is with NASA's stakeholders for a lunar landing. 
As noted in the last news update video, things get even more cloudy after Artemis 3 because those upgrades for Artemis 4 and beyond are lower priorities than Artemis 3. It seems likely that the schedules for Artemis 3, 4, and 5 will continue to be revised in the middle of this decade for launches that aren't scheduled to occur until the end of the decade or the beginning of the next one. The baseline commitment for launch of the initial gateway elements is December of 2027. The solar electric propulsion spiral from launch insertion to the NRHO gateway orbit will take a little more than a year. So if that baseline date holds, the gateway PPE and halo elements wouldn't be ready to support Artemis 4 until late 2028 or early 2029. That's already a few months after the target Artemis 4 launch date of September 2028. What's also being spotlighted is that there aren't that many alternatives to flying Artemis missions in this decade after Artemis 2. With these baselines forecasting that neither HLS nor Gateway are likely to be available until the 2028 timeframe, only a standalone Orion mission, like the one planned for Artemis 2, is a viable alternative between now and then. And the problem then is that would put Orion and SLS in a situation where they have an old mobile launcher for a retired SLS version while waiting for the new upper stage and second mobile launcher to be completed. So if, for example, NASA were to choose to fly Orion on its own in late 2026 or early 2027, there's a chance already that all the pieces necessary for Artemis IV might not be ready to fly two years after that. With respect to Artemis IV, the FY 2025 budget request congressional justification document also noted that NASA approved a baseline commitment for SLS Block 1B, which includes the new exploration upper stage. That forecasts the design certification review in January of 2028. For Mobile Launcher 2, an agency baseline commitment is still forthcoming. These are some of the things that we'll be reconsidering from time to time as more information becomes available on the production and planning status for Artemis 3 and 4. There were a couple of updates from previous videos to note. First, going back to the first completed Belay motor segment, Northrop Grumman said this was the forward center segment or the center forward segment depending on one's preference. We got another shot from NASA Public Affairs at Kennedy Space Center of the other Artemis II Center Center SRB segment being moved to the Surge 2 building of the Rotation Processing and Search Facility, the RPSF. Stacking preparations for the aft assemblies for Artemis II should have been completed by now, so all 10 motor segments should now be waiting for stacking on the mobile launcher sometime later this year, probably closer to the end of the year than the middle of the year.